Welcome back to another installment of Can Yes Fix It. This is that episode where you guys send in all your broken PC parts, or parts that you just don't need, and you see if I can fix them or tweak them, and if I can't, then generally they're going straight to the pool room. With that said, let's start tackling all these problems and seeing if we can diagnose them. But I do apologize too, because this episode has been a long time in the making and the stuff has just been sort of piling up here. And I did get those health videos of Darth Jar Jar done. So that took a lot out of the schedule. Uh, but with that said, we're back on schedule now. So I do apologize if I forgot some of the people's names who sent this stuff in. But anyway, let's see what shenanigans we can get up to. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock, and sometimes you just might need a break from the WD-40 and the DataVac. Then if so, the Z390 Taichi is your perfect choice. If you're on the market for a brand new 9900K, this thing will overclock it with ease. With a 10-phase VRM and amazing onboard audio, you're sure to please some faces. Or crush them in games, if that's your forte. Links in the description below to find out more. So first up here, we've got a heap of different stuff sent in from John over in the US. He sent in some SSDs and said that they weren't showing up when he tried to install them in our computers as boot drives. And so I do have a solution for that. And he's also got some CPUs which he hasn't tested and they may or may not work. So we'll get on very soon with those after we test out these motherboards here. But let's quickly show you guys how you can get an SSD that's possibly not booting from a fresh install of Windows to work after you do this little trick. So that was just ridiculously easy to check these three drives out and see which one was faulty. And in the case of this 240 gigabyte Drevo here, that unfortunately just hung in Windows. So it's going to be a brick drive. You're going to have problems with that no matter what you do, unless of course you're into soldering and you can find the bad components on this drive and replace it. But these two here, they're absolutely fine. So we can use them in builds. So thank you for that, John. So now we're onto motherboards and I do tackle these two different ways. If the person says it works, then I quickly check if it does work before I put it in a build. Um, but if I've been donated it and it's broken, then I generally just go straight to a tech yes, love and cleanse. And that's where I just uh, go, in this case, I'm gonna use a bit of brake cleaner uh, and then clean the board up and then give it a bit of WD-40 or a multi-purpose spray and make sure that it's all schmick before we give it that chance. Now, in the case of LGA pins here, we may need to bend these back. Some of them might have micro bends or whatnot. And then after that, if the board just doesn't work at all, then we will toss it. But anyway, let the loving begin. So there's the four motherboards there, all ready to go, but you may have noticed the data vac is looking a little bit different, and that's because early in the month, it needed its own tech yes loving. Basically what happened was I was turning it on, and then it just shorted out the whole circuit here in my home, and I did it a couple of times, I'm like, what is going on? So I opened it up, and there was a positive braided wire, like literally right next to open negative wire, and so I think one of the screws was actually going through the positive braided wire and causing that to short with the negative. But it's all fixed now and it's all ready to go. So hopefully there's no more problems with it. And also you guys have been hounding me for a long time to get a proper test bench. So I not only got one of these, I got two. And uh, Cooler Master did us a favor because apparently these are becoming end of line. So they needed to get rid of them. I'm like, dude, 
I could definitely use these. They're awesome because they're really small and really lightweight, basically the whole size of a full-size motherboard. And you get a power supply in underneath and also your drive base and you've got a power and reset button. But let's test out these four motherboards and see if they can work. So we now tested all the five motherboards that I had. Uh, I didn't bother giving this cleaning because it looked really new. And I believe the person before Alex who sent it in, uh, I believe he was just trying to get a Ryzen 2000 series chip in here. And it's just one of those things that's very easy. I've got a Ryzen 3 1200. I put that in there and it booted up. So that's absolutely fine. This here, uh, after some tech, yes, loving, this booted up absolutely fine as well. Uh, this Intel board here, I tried using the external flasher on it, except I've got no idea what BIOS chip uh, this actually takes. And so I was really confused. I tried looking on the net everywhere and I just came up empty handed. So if someone does know what exact flash ROM this is, let us know in the comment section below so I can give it a proper attempt on flashing it. In the meantime, I've just got no idea. So I kind of have to sideline this motherboard right here. And then of course, these two motherboards here are on the trash pile. Uh, this ASRock Extreme 6 just had absolutely no signal at all. So it's a completely gone board. Uh, this Z77 is just constantly boot cycling. You can't even get the uh, backup BIOS to initiate. So that thing is toast as well. I'm guessing some of the traces have gone and we decided to give it some loving in the air. Love is in the air. However, off that Extreme 6 motherboard, I did pull off the two BIOS chips, these can come in handy, especially when you've got a motherboard that fits these chips. We can then program them with our programmer to whatever we like, and that BIOS is now in our hands. So now let's move on to testing out all these different CPUs and RAM. This is pretty straightforward. If it boots, it's generally okay. Uh, with the RAM, however, you, I would like to run a stress test. Usually my Prime 95 blend test is a go-to before I actually get a PC ready to flip. So in that case, I'm gonna see which ones boot with the RAM. And then after that, if I'm putting them in a build, I'll leave it overnight with a blend test. And if it fails, then I'll have to find out which stick is failing. So that's a lengthy process. But in the meantime, we can just quickly test one by one, see what boots in our newly restored HD3 motherboard, and then come back to some of this other juicy stuff. So we just finished testing up the CPUs here and four of the six worked. Two of them just were giving no signal. So we decided to scrap those. So these can go in the pile of working parts. But now let's test out the memory while we're here. And I actually was gonna test it out with the other board, but this is the G1 Sniper and this thing looks so cool. So we finished testing up the RAM. There was three sticks that were faulty. So we're gonna chuck them in the rubbish bin, uh, but we got a heap of different memory that is all good so far. So that's gonna be great in the kitty. And then uh, over here, we've got two power supplies now, but I didn't get donated these. I actually bought them in a bundle of seven where I've already sold three of the power supplies and then I've made $10 profit. And I've got to keep four of them. However, two of these power supplies didn't come with CPU eight pin connectors. So what we're gonna do is use this digital multimeter here 
to read out these proprietary um, connections. Even though they're eight pins and a lot of other power supplies have eight pin connections, uh, what a lot of these companies do is they actually change all the routing around. So basically it's, if you use another company's connector, you're gonna have the wrong voltages going to the wrong uh, pins. And so that's gonna cause problems. But if we use a multimeter, we can then rearrange things and see how they perform. So now for this next part, we simply get our motherboard and uh, put a short connector on it, which allows the power supply then to start and we'll have active voltages in these pins here. And this is the 12 volt pin. So we want the top four to be positive and the bottom four to be negative. So we simply turn it on now, the fan should start spinning. And uh, ideally we'd want to hit this with positive and then this one with negative. And we can see that that's actually the other way around. So that one, they're switched in this case. So that there, the top one is negative. So now we can go around and test. So that bottom one's positive as well. That's positive as well. And that's positive as well. And since we know these bottom four are positive now, we can then go on the top here and we can see that that's negative, that's negative, and that's negative. So. <laughs> This one here is actually just reversed. So I think a very quick and easy fix for this would just be to simply grab the power supply, grab this connector here. I mean, I could be wrong, but we'll give it a go. Simply turn it upside down and just ram that in. And let's try that again. Success, 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 success. <laughs> Getting past proprietary modular power supply connectors has never been easier. Just flip it upside down. Then again, I think according to you guys over in the US, in Australia, that's normal. So we did the exact same trick on the other power supply there, this time with a Corsair CPU 8-pin, and that worked exactly the same as the Thermaltake 8-pin, where we flipped it upside down, and it was now working correctly. Uh, now, what we got left here on the desk is a old Logitech trackball mice, and I mean, this thing just came like this. It's so, like, it's really filthy. Like, I don't even know what that is. Could that give me a disease or something? Like, I mean, Guys, when, when you send some stuff in, like, I really appreciate getting sent some like the motherboards and the RAM and stuff, but like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. It's like, I mean, I'd give it some tech, yes, loving, except I might get a disease from it. Uh, but I did get these two old graphics cards here. I am keen to test them out. Apparently they do work, um, but I do have a video coming up for you guys where I'm gonna be testing some of these old potato cards. So I look forward to hopefully featuring them in that video. And then behind that, the last of the stuff I got sent in here was a lot of cables from a guy in Singapore. He actually didn't even leave his name on the envelope. He's just sent over a lot of different um, cables. And so here's a lot of LAN cables. Uh, these here, I actually don't need these. So if someone in the audience needs some telephone cables, let us know. I'll gladly give them away to you. Uh, and there was a heap of different power cables that got sent in. So a big thanks for that. But I guess it's now time to conclude everything that's on the desk here because I guess today's episode really sums up what it's all about and that's small victories. So there it all is with today's episode and I'm actually really excited because everything today just went so smoothly. Stuff just didn't work or it worked. I didn't have any problems where it was giving me a flicking screen or there was a message that would come up. It was just straightforward. We had the RAM that either didn't work or it worked and in most cases with the CPUs and the RAM, a lot of it did work. So this stash has just gotten bigger and so now I've got more stuff that I can use in future builds. And speaking of builds, we've got those five builds coming for the school very soon. Finally have found four of the kids that we're gonna be giving them away to. I've actually selected the winners. I'll be making a separate video on that and I'm also gonna be giving one of the extra computers away to the school itself so everyone at that school can use it. It's been a long time coming, but that's coming very soon. 
Also on top of that, the power supplies. We got kind of lucky where we just flipped those CPU eight pins around and they worked perfectly. So that's two very good modular power supplies that I can use in builds. And also the motherboards that uh, did work, they were the good ones. So except for the Extreme 6, that just flat out had no power going to it whatsoever. So I'm really confused what happened there because usually you at least get like the USB uh, ports lighting up the keyboard, for example, and we didn't even have that with that motherboard. It was just completely gone. And then lastly, of course, that Intel motherboard that needed to be programmed, I just didn't know what flash ROM it was exactly. So if someone does know in the description below, I'd love to hear that and give it a try and try and bring that board back to life. As in a previous video or build I did, it bricked when I was doing the update via Windows, which was the only way you could update the BIOS on that motherboard. And uh, yeah, try not to update your BIOS through Windows. It's not good. Uh, but other than that, in today's episode, you can see how we cleaned a lot of stuff and we just tried to avoid problems from the get-go. Uh, now the whole process around here is so efficient where I'm just doing things and not trying to waste time. And so I'll clean those motherboards, clean them very effectively, very efficiently. Same with the RAM and CPUs. I even gave them a clean. And so I know that that's not the problem after that. And I brought so much stuff back to life by just giving it a thorough clean. And a lot of people are messaging me behind the scenes saying the same techniques and processes have saved a lot of PC parts, especially when people come to them or they're selling in their local area and they say this whole computer is faulty and they go around and they buy it and then they can actually get the whole build back to life. So that was really cool. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any parts that you want to send in to us, then I'll put my PO box in the description below. Any parts that you may not need or you just want to see me mess around with them, then you're welcome to send them in. However, in terms of donating parts that are worth a good amount of money and you guys know that they work, I do implore you guys to donate those to people in need around your local area. Uh, it's sort of like an initiative that I started from last year when the channel started to build up. But of course, if you want to support the channel, uh, link for the merch is in the description below. And also there's my Patreon link if you just want to toss us a tip and get access to uh, monthly behind the scenes vlogs. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.